Hey everybody, hope you're doing all right. Today we are going to use React Slick, a, uh, a, a library that helps us to create different carousel sliders. And so for this one, I'm gonna show you all how to set up a slider that has this kind of 3D rotation effect where we have this infinite loop through images and you can use whatever you want for these images, but to have this cool kind of like transition where it looks like it's kind of popping out at you. So with that, Let's go ahead and get started. I have a, a new project here. Um, it's just a create react app. That's pretty much all I've done. And then uh, I have also imported these, uh, these static assets. So I just use a site called undraw. I've used it before in previous videos. And then I went ahead and just kind of manually edited these images so that they're roughly the same height and width. Um, that'll be helpful for this. If you have wildly different sizes on your images, you might uh, run into some issues just following along with this tutorial. So a couple of packages that we are going to need. So I'm going to do yarn add and then react icons, which isn't entirely necessary, but uh, I'm going to use it for the uh, custom buttons that we're going to make and then react slick and slick carousel. And these last two are the ones that you need for the um, for the carousel stuff to work. All right, so now that that's installed, I'm gonna start up the server here. Cool, so we've got our app. So I'm gonna hop into app.js in here. We can actually get rid of all this stuff in the middle. Up at the top, we can get rid of this logo since we're not using that anymore. We're gonna have a couple of imports. So we are gonna be using use state. We're gonna wanna import the slider from React Slick. And then we're gonna import all of the uh, assets that we're using. So I have astronaut coming in from dot slash assets. And I'll just duplicate that. All right, so these are the names of the files. I'm just importing them so that we can use them in this project. And I'll give it a save. So right now, all we have is this div. I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna return the div with some stuff inside of it. That stuff is going to be composed of our slider. And then our slider is going to map through these different images. So if you're pulling these in from an API, that's fine as well. And again, if you're collaborating with somebody and you have the opportunity to talk with a designer or somebody else that is using these images, if they have the ability to make these images the same size, that'll be helpful. Otherwise, you'll need to um, take care of that on the way in with your CSS. Um, so with this, we're just going to be using these local files so we can create an uh, an array of images. So we'll do const images equals an array, and then we'll just reference each of our imports. So astronaut, celebrating, education, and taken. And then in our slider, what we can do is map through those images. So images.map, and for each image and images index, We're going to return a div inside of that div. There is going to be an image with a source of image and we'll just give the alt the image as well. Um, probably better ways to handle that. But for now, we're just working with these static assets. 
Um, and that is good for now. Now we actually need to utilize our slider. So with React Slick, it's going to expect a series of settings which are declared in a settings object. So what we can do here is inside of our function, we can create the settings object. We are going to set infinite to true so that it just continues to cycle throughout our images. We only have four, but if you saw in that initial demo, if I, I could click right over, 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 and over, and over again, and it would just continue to cycle through these four. We'll do lazy load as true. We'll set our speed to 300 or 300 milliseconds. It defaults to 500. And this is going to line up with some CSS transitions that we implement in a little bit. We're going to have slides to show of three. Center mode we'll have as true. And then center padding we'll have as zero. So if we look at our app right now, it's not going to look awesome just yet. So we have previous over here. We have like some super wide stuff going on. So what we need to do with React Slick is actually import their uh, base CSS. So I'm going to open up our app CSS and split it to the right. So all of this stuff we can get rid of. So we just have our app. And then at the top, we need to do a couple of imports. I'm going to copy and paste these over. So this is helping us out with some default styling. So now you can see our images are showing up. We're still having some issues with uh, the buttons and everything, but you can see it, it's already looking a little bit better. So now inside of our app, let's go ahead and give it a width of 50%. We can give it a margin of 10 rem top and bottom and then auto side to side. Okay, so now we're kind of centered up a little bit. We can also set a, a height on this. So we'll do 570 pixels just to kind of rein in the slider a little bit. And this is all for desktop just to make sure that we're not going to um, go beyond the, uh, the height of our container here. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to um, actually utilize uh, a, a property on this settings object that will allow us to use uh, custom arrows. So right now the arrows aren't showing up because there's no styling on them. But since we're going to go ahead and build custom arrows anyway, we can just uh, add this in now. So next arrow is going to be uh, a component called next arrow that we have not yet built. And then prev arrow, same thing. We're going to go ahead and build these now. So above our settings, we can create a next arrow. We're going to take in the on click prop. So that's going to be passed in via the slider component. What we're going to be doing here is actually spreading in our settings object. And since we're uh, referencing this next arrow, this slider component knows that the next arrows on click handler should move the um, move the carousel to the next image and same thing with previous. So what we can do is since this next arrow knows to expect an on click that is passed in through props. And so now all we have to do is return a div and we'll give it a class name of arrow, which we'll share with the previous arrow, and then next, which will be its own unique 
class name and then on click is just going to be set to that on click that comes in via props. And then in the middle of our div, what we're going to do is we're going to import fa arrow right and fa arrow left from react icons slash fa. So this is what we're using this for. Again, this part is this icon part is optional and feel free to change up the icons that you use as you see fit. So for our next arrow, we'll have FA arrow right. And we can actually just copy this next arrow and make some changes. So the previous arrow is also going to take in on click through props and pass it through. We're going to change this class name to arrow prev. So it'll have these two classes and then FA arrow left. So we'll hit save, take a look at what we've got so far. Cool, all right, so we have our arrows. They are cycling through the images. So that's a good start. Obviously we have some work to do. So you can actually see these three images that are being shown. We'll apply some styles in our CSS to make sure that it looks better than it does now. So in our slider, what we're going to do here is we're going to watch the index of our images, and then we're going to apply some, some styling based on that index. So we need to do two things. Number one, we have a class name where if the index is equal to the image index, which we have not yet set. Then we're going to have a class name of slide and active slide. If it's not, then we're just going to have slide. Let me build this image index part out and then uh, I'll come back to this and, and show what's going on. So before we had this import use state, we are actually going to be uh, updating our image index in this settings object. So up top, we'll have const image index and set image index. And we'll have an initial state of zero. Then using the before change property on the settings object, We've got current and next coming in. And before the change, we are going to set image index to next. So basically what's happening is in the settings object, we have this before change method. And when you click on the uh, arrow to either go next or, or previous, so the next slide or the previous slide, we're going to update that image index to whatever the next slide is. So that's going to manage this piece of state. Then since this images map has, in this case, four images, each with their own index, it's going to look at the image index. If this image index matches the index of the image itself, then we're going to add this active slide class. If it doesn't match, then we'll just have the regular slide class. So far, we're not going to see anything because we have not yet applied the CSS. So it should look pretty much the same. So at this point, now we can start with our styling. And we should have, I believe, all of our app.js stuff, but we'll take a look as it comes along. So. For our slide class, any image inside of that class is going to have a width of 20 rem and then a margin of zero auto. We'll give the slide class a transform scale. We'll do 0 0.2. We'll give it a transition 
on just the transform property of 300 milliseconds. So this 300 milliseconds is meant to match the speed here at which these slides transition from one to the next. And then we'll give it an opacity, we can say 0.5. So now if we take a look at our application, you can see that the scaling, uh, it's been scaled way down and there's some opacity. So this is our initial, each slide is getting this class. And so what we want to do is we want to apply that active slide class to the center image so that it blows up and gets nice and big and clear. So with our active slide class, we can transform our scale. We can do 1.1 or 1.0 and give it an opacity of one. So now it's in the middle and you can already see the effect that it's taking. So now all we have left to do is just a couple of different positioning things. So let's go ahead and rip through that real quick. So for our arrow, and our arrow is applied to both our next and our previous arrow. So for arrow, we'll do a background color of white. We'll give it a position absolute. Um, cursor pointer. And we'll give it a Z index of 10 just to make sure that it can be clicked on. Sometimes we fall into this issue of overlap and the arrow is uh, like kind of in a disabled state uh, seemingly because you can't click on it because of uh, its, its positioning. So then the, so that'll be applied to the div itself. And then uh, the SVG, which is the actual icon. So we'll do arrow SVG we're going to give that a transition on the color of 300 milliseconds. And then when we hover on the arrow, we're going to change its color to 68EDFF. And this just matches the uh, color that the images, the, the um, SVG icons have or the SVG, uh, excuse me, the um, PNG images that we have in our assets. Then for our next arrow, we'll give it a position of right at 0% and top at 50. And then for our previous, we'll have left at 0% and top at 50. And let's take a look. So we hover over it, you get the nice little color change. Goes backwards, goes forward, all through. And one quick note, you'll notice that these are staying static, these arrows. Um, a couple of things to, to note. Um, one is it helps to have the images at the same size. And two, with this height, if we didn't have a height on this and the images were different um, different sizes, you might see those arrows start to bounce around. So those are a couple things to keep in mind if you run into uh, any issues and need to troubleshoot. So thanks for following along. If you have any questions on this, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll leave a link to this repo for your reference, as well as uh, links to React Slick uh, so that you can check out their documentation because they have a lot of really cool examples. But uh, again, thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, have a good one.